the David Lee Roth story. This is legendary. <laughs> I love this one. Yeah, it's a good one, right? Uh, come home from whatever job I was doing at the time. Uh, I would think I was working in New York City doing a session. I come home and the mom was very nice. She goes, oh, hey, I've got a message for you. A uh, Mr. Roth called you. Um, and I'm like, Mr. Roth. And I'm thinking like, you know, my accountant firm, maybe like I'm trying to think like this, you know, I can't quite put it together. And I said, uh, Mr. Roth, she goes, yes, uh, he left a message. And I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking like, it's like, you know, did I not pay a tax or something like that? You know? And so she looks at the thing, looks at the piece of paper. She goes, um, yes, please call. It's in regards to fame and fortune. And I'm like, fucking David Lee Roth. I knew. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. You know? So there oh, we yeah. go. And I, I knew the second I heard that, I'm like, it's on. <laughs> Pull up to the to the Roth house in Pasadena. It's got these massive, like, Casablanca-style walls. And the door opens, and there I am. Ding, 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 ding. The car comes in. I park the car. The assistant comes out. And, uh, okay, yeah, Mr. Roth is down by the pool. And I, you know, walk, and it's like, it's quite an estate. Like, it's like, you know, you're walking through, like, this, you know, path. And you're going down these really, like, the fucking Scarface house. I was like, oh, shit, you know? And sure enough, there by the pool in his fucking Adidas tracksuit is David <laughs> Roth, man. And he's, like, practicing his fucking Tai Chi and shit. And I mean, like, like, and he's got this big fucking phone. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> fall, this is nuts. You know what I mean? And he was fucking hilarious. Holy shit. I mean, the first, so it was ultimately a three-hour meeting. And the right. first meeting was first hour was i'm telling you my fucking sides hurt he was so funny i mean like it was like the guy was just banging him off he was just one liner after one liner he was dropping these chestnuts of knowledge on me holy shit i mean i had to literally take a minute and be like dude give me a second like he was fucking funny charismatic i mean holy shit and then now we're on hour two and i'm like Okay, I kind of feel like I kind of heard that before. Like, you know what I mean, like, so <laughs> the hour two was starting to kind of get a little long in the tooth for me. And fucking hour three was like, holy shit, I'm literally being held hostage by David Lee Roth. Like, I just couldn't, I couldn't find a break in the conversation to like scoot out. Like, it was like, it was <sighs> my best analogy is like the, the movies always, the, 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 the records always going, you just drop the needle and you get it and then you lift up the needle and then you drop it again. Like it's just going. And so, you know, it, by, so by hour three, I just had to get out of there. It was too much, man. I was like, it was like, but uh, so anyways, uh, we talked and we had a great time. I sent material. He didn't, I don't think he liked what I sent uh -huh. in and it just never went any farther than that. So that was that story there, but it was a great experience. And, and it was very, I mean, he was very kind and warm and funny, but it was like, whew, it was like drinking straight cranberry juice on that shit, man. You got to add yeah. some sugar every now and then, you know, but crazy. Yeah. Crazy, wow. Right?